are happy to be here one more time. So we want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. I trust that everyone had a beautiful day, an enjoyable day, and we are here with you for our second time. So welcome again, and we are going to have a really great evening. We are going to continue with our study as we look at the importance of the fivefold ministers in the lives of each born again believer. So we are going to be continuing from last week. Uh, we are going to give some others a chance to come on. So again, we are just saying welcome to each and every one of you. And thank you for taking the time out to be with us and to share with us, to interact with us this evening. We are in for a great and enjoyable time as we study, as we look at the word. So again, I trust that you would have had a beautiful day. So we are going to just greet you. Um, and if you are on, we are here. We're using a different device so we can actually see you and we can see your comments. So we want to say good evening to Anita. Good evening to Chrissy. We want to say good evening to Kristen. So we're actually having the opportunity to see very clearly who we are interacting with. And we want to say good evening, Adina. Thank you so much for joining us this evening again. And we are looking forward to another great, great time of teaching. Uh, we are excited to be actually diving into the word seeing what it has to say and so we are glad that you are here earlier i well obviously said or you know i hope that you had a good day and that your day was productive and uh, mine certainly was so i give god thanks for that how was your day um well good evening everybody and again it's a pleasure to be here alongside my wife my ministry partner, as we expect to going to share with you um, from the word of the Lord. Um, my day, well, just another busy day um, from school to um, home, up and down, doing <laughs> different things. So, but all in all, I had an enjoyable day. Thank you. All right, and good evening, Madria. It's good to have you. Um, you were telling me that you're going to be ready with your pen and your paper and everything. So we are looking forward to a good time of teaching. We're just taking this opportunity to welcome everybody so far. So if you're here, just tell us good evening. Put it in the comment section so that we can see you and we can say hi. And we can really welcome you and greet you and look forward to a wonderful time in the word this evening so again welcome welcome and welcome <laughs> so i want to just one more minute or so and then we'll get right into it so just one more minute by our clock here same 804 so we're just giving our greetings for the first five minutes yes and yeah, so again, I trust that you had a beautiful day, a wonderful day, a productive day, and let's get right into our teaching. So what we have been looking at is the importance of the fivefold ministry in the life of each believer. And I prefer to say it that way because we have a tendency to when we think about the church, we have a tendency to think about, you know, the building or what goes on in the building. But as was emphasized last week, is that you are the church. You are the 
part of the ecclesia, the called out ones, and what is the role of each fivefold minister in your life? What is the role of each fivefold minister in my life, in our lives? Okay, based on Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. So again, I'm going to ask Tony to read for us those two verses since that is the foundational um, verse or well, 11 and 12 verses that we are actually using for our teaching. So Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. So from the NIV version of the Bible, that is the New International Version, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12 say it was he referring to Jesus who gave some to be apostles some to be prophets some to be evangelists and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach, reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. That's actually verse 13 as well. So you read down to verse 13. Yes. Okay. So last week we listed the five gifts that Jesus Christ gave to his church and we actually made mention of their duties or functions and we stressed uh, a few of them last week and like any teacher would want we're going to recap before we move on all right so I'm going to ask questions and I'm going to encourage you to write your answers in the comments where we can see. Okay, so first question, and you never know, suppose there's a giveaway to this, so I hope you have your thinking caps on and your memory banks are well oiled, maybe. <laughs> but what I want you to do is to answer these few questions, and I'm just going to randomly say them, ask them off my head, okay? So we were talking about the fivefold ministry so let's see those of you who are here already can you actually list the five ministers or the five gifts or the five offices that we were referring to in our first teaching session so let's see i want you to list the five so get busy Get busy typing if you can, if you are on your phone or you are at the computer and you can type them there quickly. What are the five gifts that King Jesus gave to his church? What are, we often refer to them also as the offices, but those five gifts that make up the fivefold ministry. So I want you to list them or, um, in the comment section below. What are the five gifts that King Jesus gave to his church for specific purposes? Now, I'm not going to say the purposes yet, because that's going to be the question number two. So we are recapping. We are recapping. So we're looking to see, we're giving you a few sec more seconds and I'm trusting that I can see them live. I'm not seeing anything yet. They're still writing. Probably still writing. And then again, there's a couple second delay in when we are live anyway. Mm -hmm. So I would say whatever we say will be a little bit earlier before it actually reaches them. So maybe, did you remember them? Do you know them? The five offices? Yes. I just read them. <laughs> but the 
if you remember. Suppose you just read. Well, you know, I, people read and still don't remember yeah. or don't know or yeah, yeah. But, um, mm. it's 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 ongoing. They, 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 we've been hearing them so many times. So many times, and actually, I've been sharing them, just sharing them here on Facebook. So. If we are looking, we can literally, we can we literally, <laughs> we can literally see them. Well, we are not seeing them here from the laptop, mm -hmm. but you certainly, now I check my phone, have writing. been writing them. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Let's see the bright persons here now. Well, okay. Well, it's now coming up. So I don't know why but yeah, happen. I don't see them there on the laptop. So let's go through. Um, am I seeing this from the beginning? I don't know. I'm seeing, I'm seeing Madria. I think I, I'm seeing her first. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, the shepherd, and the teacher. All right. So you got 100% right there, straight off the bat. And I love the fact that you put the word, you use the word shepherd. Because as we go on in this teaching, we are going to be speaking so much about that. I love that word. That's the word that I prefer to use. That word, shepherd. It speaks volumes. So well done. Okay, then. <laughs> okay, we're trying to follow you when it doesn't show up on the on the laptop. So we're trying to follow you on our, on our phones. All right. So then we have Adina listed. Prophet, evangelist, I don't know if Adina listed the others individually. I can't see, I can't scroll further up from what I'm seeing. Um, Kristen, apostles, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teachers, well done. And audit, you have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, excellent. And Peggy, welcome, good evening, nice to have you. We're gonna have a great time. As you can see, you have work to do here. You have to type and write to me. <laughs> Apostle, teacher, prophet, evangelist, and pastor. Very good. And Elfrida Greenaway, welcome, welcome, welcome. So you need to give yourselves a big hand. Let me give you a hand. Woo! <laughs> All right. So question number two. They were, as we discussed the fivefold ministers, the offices, we actually like hammered home to reasons to purposes for these ministers in our lives two we may have mentioned some other stuff well when we read the the, the the passage but we really did mention or like hammered home two functions two purposes uh, main purposes so far for the fivefold ministers, and we did that last week. So, if you can remember, oh, Adinos, if you can remember, uh, you can write it in the comment section. So, we need two purposes that we discussed last week for the fivefold ministers. Why are they there? <laughs> Why did Jesus Christ give them to his church? So Adina said she started out first. Well, way to go. But somehow in our scrolling, in my scrolling, I could not see. So you probably listed your other three then above what we are seeing here. All right. So welcome. I see some other persons joining. Welcome, welcome. We are asking questions and we are doing a recap from last week. And I'm following you here as well. So I am sure, Adina, you got them. I'm sure you got them. So congratulations to you too. Okay. All right. So we're having some more answers now for number two. What was the actual purposes listed or mentioned last week for the five-fold ministers? What are their purposes in our lives? So I'm going to give you a few seconds to answer, to answer those, to answer that question, actually question number two. 
What were the purposes of the fivefold ministers or their ministry in our lives as believers? I remember, and as I listen back, because I, I usually listen back to things during, during the week as well. So as I listen back, I realized there were two, two main, 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 main points. Okay, so I'm seeing two answers here. Okay, one from Anita, which says, to equip the saints to do the work of ministry. And then I am seeing, all right, so I'm now seeing some more rolling up here. Madria, to, to, to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Yes, Anita is saying, all sorts of additional things here. <laughs> but you'll get a complete the list. You listed that separately. <laughs> All right. Uh, Marjorie, to grow the body of Christ into full maturity. Kristen, you have to equip the saints for the work of their ministry and bring to maturity. Uh, Peggy has perfecting of the saints for the edifying of the body of Christ. All right. Well, well done. You have the two, okay? Uh, let me give somebody else a chance. Okay, Chrissy has to bring to spiritual maturity and to equip for the work of the ministry. And that's it. Both of them, those are the two. To bring the believer. I don't want to say the word church. I don't want, I want you to take this personally. I want you to take it personally. I want you to think about yourself. You are Part of the ecclesia, you are called out one once you are a born again believer. So, therefore, we want you to focus on you, and we want to focus on you. So, number one, well, I'm going to use since Chrissy's is the last one here to bring the body of Christ, the believers, to spiritual maturity, and number two was to equip the saints or the believers for the work of their ministry so that is absolutely correct those were the two main points that we discussed and the two purposes all right of each one of these ministers in your life or the offices or the functions okay so this evening now we are going to move ahead so i have to give you a clap again Yay! well done well done well done so i want everybody to really remember that those were the two purposes of the five four ministers that we discussed last week we stressed heavily on the fact that everybody must was it w word work work everybody must work and i i was laughing at a comment that chrissy posted um sometime probably after where she wrote everybody must work everybody must work hard i remember years ago that was a song <laughs> and indeed it was for it's for the work of the ministry preparing you equipping you perfecting you for that work of the ministry and bringing you to maturity. If because of my, my role as a teacher and I like things orderly, if I had to personally list them, I would put to bring to maturity first, and then I would put to equip for the work of the ministry second. So that's just my personal order because you grow up you mature while you're growing, you're gathering information, you're learning, you're moving. And therefore, at the end, you know, like we, we don't send a, we really don't send a four-year-old out to work, do we? I mean, for us, we, you, you would get, um, we would get charged for, there's something called child labor and stuff like that. And, you know, children, you don't need to be employing them like, 
really, really employing them. So there's just something in life that shows you that as a child, you're still learning, you're still being equipped, you're still being trained. The Bible talks about train up a child in the way that he should go. You know, so there's that place for childhood where you are being trained, you're learning, you're on that journey of learning. And then when you come to a certain age, you know, you're now grown, you're more mature, that's when you really start to do some work, yeah? So, without further ado, let's get into today's study, this evening's study. And we are going to be looking at, we're going to be focusing on the actual functions of the teacher, the fivefold teacher. So we know that we have listed them already. The apostle, and you have done an excellent job. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor or shepherd, and the teacher. Now, if you had scrolled down my page, you would have seen that an image was used probably last week of a hand showing five fingers and each, get it in the frame, each minister or fivefold, each fivefold minister rep, was represented by a finger. The thumb represented the apostle, the index finger here, represented the prophet. The middle finger represented the evangelist. The, people call it the ring finger, represented the shepherd or pastor. And the little finger represented the teacher. Now there's a significance for all of that. Like for the prophet, that's the pointy finger, they always point, they always guide, you know, so that's the prophet. The middle finger, the longest finger on our hand, the evangelist is said to be a gatherer. So they are the, they go far, they reach out far to bring in the souls and gather the souls. So they go, they go, they go. Um, the pastor, the shepherd on the ring finger, uh, that's usually said, use uh, and refer to as married to the church, the ring finger, you know, the married to the body of Christ, because you know, the many times out of all the, the, the shepherd is the one that's stationed with the body of believers or the, the, the grouping, you know, however small, however large, the shepherd is there. The evangelist, even if an evangelist is from that assembly or grouping of believers, that evangelist you may not see around all the time. The evangelist would go and come. The apostle, same thing. You might not see the apostle there all the time because the apostle will go out and do work other places within the body of Christ as well. The teacher, you might find the teacher stationary. Um, the teacher grounds the people. So you see that little finger is the one that if you put your hand down is the one that rests on stuff. Yes, yeah? so the teacher grounds the believers. So each finger represents. So we will talk about that some more as we go along. But just bringing a little bit of um, explanation to that hand that the fivefold ministers represent. And each finger refers to a different function, yes? And has a different type of symbolism. Okay, so we are starting off with the teacher, okay? Listed last in Ephesians 4, 11, but definitely not the least. And as we discuss and go through the functions of a five-fold teacher, you are going to understand how important this person is to your life as a believer. Now we want to, I'm going to ask Tony to read 1 Corinthians 12, 28, the first part of that verse. 
So 1 Corinthians 12, verse 28, not the entire verse, the first part. Now, let me plug in here. As I would often say, some persons are very new. And sometimes you may see a reference to a scripture in the word of God. And you may see next to the verse a letter, like A. It could mean the first, it would mean the first part of the verse. Some would have B. So it could, for example, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28A. And so that's what Tony will be reading. But just for general knowledge, for those of you who would not know as yet, and you know, you just enter your journey and now beginning to study the word of God, you will come up sometimes on that little letter after, and it could refer to just a part of the verse. So go ahead for me, please. Okay, so I'm reading as um, that's the mention from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and uh, just the first portion of verse 28, which says, And in the church, God has appointed, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers. So read it again. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers. Okay, thank you. And in the church, God has appointed, God has appointed, one more time, God has appointed first apostles, second prophets, third teachers so i don't want you to forget that god himself has appointed first apostles second prophets third teachers so here in first corinthians so you want to make sure and write that scripture down because that is another very important scripture to our study we see here that jehovah god himself has appointed these to his church, to his ecclesia, to the people, to the born again believers, okay? And thirdly listed here, we see the word teachers. You know, we, are, we have the five, so we're seeing teachers. So make sure to write, if you're taking your notes, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 28, a little common A, under case. Upper case, under case? Lower case. Under case. Lower case A. Okay. All right. Now, let's jump into this thing. So, we are here looking today at this evening at the function of the teacher. Why the teacher? Why did Jehovah God appoint the teacher? Good night, Clarabelle. It's good to have you. Thank you so much for joining. And I'm sure you're going to be learning so much tonight with us. Thank you. So, first function of the teacher. Number one. And I'm going to go slowly because I know some of you are great, excellent students and you are taking notes. I'm so proud of you already. Number one, the first function of the teacher or the teaching ministry that we are going to be discussing tonight is that the teacher presents new truths to us, the believers. The teacher presents new truths to us, the believers new truths so even if you just wanted to jot that down new truths someone might be asking hmm new truths why the teacher would present new truths but i want to say here if you knew everything already Jehovah God will not appoint a teacher 
there would be no need for a teacher to teach us. We go to school or we went to school, let's take that as a practical example, because we needed to learn new things. Every grade, every form presented new, new what? Lessons, new teachings, new information. So why we need a teacher is because the teachers give, give us new truths. If we knew everything, we would not need a teacher. Agree? So just in the practical, so we're just starting this off plain and simple. As a Spanish teacher, talk to us. A teacher presents new truths. This is very basic, very simple. Why we need a five-fold teacher? We don't know it all. We need to be taught. And we need to be taught new things that we just don't know. Yeah, I, I certainly support the point there in terms of new truths. And as was mentioned, as a teacher, a teacher is seen as one who has a wealth of knowledge. Um, and the students to whom the knowledge will be imparted are obviously seen as vessels or sponges that would obviously receive and soak up the knowledge. Uh, the teacher does not uh, impart everything one time, mm -hmm. but I love that. we take the lesson or the teaching of a particular area, um, step by step, if the students are going to understand, because it's important to make sure that everybody understands. Uh, when everybody understands, everybody learns. And so we want, the teacher wants the students to learn, hence it's important to teach step by step so that those new that new piece of information can be understood and hence the student or students be able to learn so that's right teacher presents new material new truths on an ongoing basis thank you very much <laughs> new truths on an ongoing basis so that is basic um sometimes maybe in the past, we never thought about it so much um, for us as believers. But the thing is about the word of God that we will never fully exhaust revelation from the scriptures ever in our lifetime. I am sure that you would have noticed some of you for yourselves that sometimes you go and you read a familiar scripture. And some revelation just jumps out at you that you never saw before. So the word of God is alive. It is active. It is full with dimensions upon dimensions and depths upon depths of revelation and truth that the Holy Spirit would give to the body of Christ. So there's always something that is going to be unfolded and unpacked concerning the word of God. And that is why there would always be a fresh revelation here that may not have been revealed before time in the past or to a generation previously, you know, that we can get. And the Lord would have this particular generation to have certain truths now. So the teacher is one who presents new truths from the word of God. Not that they don't present things that have been, you know, said and taught already, of course. But the thing is for someone to be taught uh, when they come into the body of Christ. I'm thinking also of like new believers. You, you don't know. And even no matter where we are, there's still always more to learn. We will die and never exhaust the full knowledge um, of the word of God. Never! Mm -hmm. So there's always need for teaching, teaching. You're always gonna hear something new. 
You're always going to be receiving something new. That is how it's going to be for our lifetimes, our lifetime as believers. Okay? And the thing is, too, that sometimes uh, many believers may not always receive certain revelatory truths. So then that is why there is need also for the teacher and the fivefold teacher in the body of Christ. So remember, the function that we are looking at, the first function is that the fivefold teacher presents new truths to believers, okay? Now the fivefold teacher has a supernatural grace to receive these revelatory truths and present them to the body of Christ. Remember the fivefold teacher, the fivefold offices, each, each gift, they carry a special grace upon them, remember, for the body of Christ. So they, the teacher, we're looking at the teacher this evening, the teacher then carries a special grace to literally receive these downloads, as it were. If that's the teacher's job, remember God himself, Jehovah God, appoints the teachers. Jehovah God would have raised up the teacher. So the teacher is gifted supernaturally to receive revelatory truths to dispense to the body of Christ. To those that they need to raise up, lead, guide, etc. I don't want to use too many words because then it would put me over into some of the other functions. So I just want to keep this really neat and narrow and precise. One, the, our first function of the fivefold teacher is that the teacher is given to us by Jehovah God. And the teacher carries a special ability to present new truths and that is one of the functions. So that one is basically pretty simple and pretty straightforward. And I guess as we looked at that from even a natural um, teaching, um, teacher, student perspective, that's what all teachers do, whether in the natural or in the spiritual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just there, they are there to give us new information, new truths. Okay, so that is number one. So that is our first function of the fivefold teacher. And you will hear me repeatedly say fivefold teacher because I don't want us to get it mixed up with other teachers. So the fivefold teacher. Okay, number two. Hey, now this is an easy one. This is the one we really discussed last week. The second function that we are going to look at this evening of the fivefold teacher is to equip and train the believers for the work of ministry. Yay. All right. So that is the second one. And I think that that in itself we have began to look at all last week. But the second function of the fivefold teacher is that they are given by Jehovah God as gifts to the body of Christ to equip and train the believers for their work of the ministry. The teaching ministry we have to agree based on the word of God is meant therefore to train the saints, to train the believers. So when you see the word teaching or you see the office of the fivefold teacher in operation you need to think this is a trainer because as this person gifted supernaturally and graced supernaturally by almighty god comes into our lives this person is there to train us so that we can grow up and we can do the work of the ministry, okay? The purpose of the teacher in the life of the believer, therefore, is to give him or her the tools, the skills, 
the equipment, as it were, to do that work. So isn't Jehovah God awesome? He calls each and every one of us to do a work. Mm -hmm. But then he doesn't just leave it all up to us. He set these gifts in the body of Christ to train us, to equip us, to give us the tools necessary, the skills necessary, so that we will actually be completely furnished so that we can do the work of the ministry effectively. So the teacher is a trainer. Do we need then the teacher? I, I don't even want to think too much about that. We just need the trainer. We need the teacher because the word of God says so. <laughs> you know, we need that teacher because the teacher is listed in the five. We need that fivefold teacher because we have work to do, but we need to be prepared for the work. We need to be trained for the work. So the second function of the fivefold teacher in our lives is that that teacher actually trains us by giving us also tools via the teaching or through the teaching or by the teaching, we are given the tools and the skills, and therefore we receive then the ability in which to do the work. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I would want to um, bring it in now, uh, as usual, in, from, the, from the natural standpoint point of view. Um, the, the, the teacher equips, we go to school to basically to be equipped. Yes and it's to be equipped for a specific purpose again yeah uh so that we can be um, sent out into society to make meaningful or positive contributions to society in other words to be a positive asset to society um having gained the skills from school and so um equipped people in different uh, Disciplines, you want to call it. Of course, in primary, you have that general knowledge of all of the various areas, the curricula, secondary, the same, but you're a little more specific. And as you go up, you become more specific um, in your training um, and you're being equipped for works of service to the community. Yes, when the government gives you a scholarship, they are sending you out to be trained so that you can return and to make an even greater impact or contribution rather you know to the community on a whole yes you could you could be of greater service to the community at large so they they, they being being sent out to be equipped means that you will be interacting with different teachers and they will be teaching you and equipping you and send you back home into your community to do the works of service and to contribute to the community. So yes, I do agree with that point. So here we can definitely say as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. spiritual. Yeah. yeah? The same purposes and functions you find a general teacher would perform in the lives of their students. Same here for us within the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Jehovah God saw it fit that in order to equip the saints, to grow up the saints, the saints would need teachers. There's a very important point. I don't want to bring it in here, but I'm trusting the Holy Spirit that I will not forget it. I want to say it near the end. So the teacher is a trainer. Now listen to this, this is important. The teacher, the fivefold teacher goes far beyond just transferring information to fill us with facts. The fivefold teacher 
within the body of Christ goes far beyond just filling our minds with information and giving us facts. I want you to think about that. Some persons would associate teaching or would call a, a particular person a teacher because they dispense information. That is not a fivefold office teacher. It is far more than just hurling information at you so that you can be filled with head knowledge. That is not a fivefold teacher. If that is what the person um, would do in the name of teaching in the body of Christ. Now, what a fivefold teacher is anointed to do is graced supernaturally by Almighty God to do is they will take the word of God, they will break down that word of God and put it in such a fashion that you can understand. So just because a person hurls a whole set of scriptures at, at you or maybe in some sort of session, conference, um, um, service, whatever it is, doesn't make them a teacher. I hope you're understanding me. There is a special grace upon a fivefold teacher to bring the word to a place where you understand. So it's not just hurling information and facts at you or just scripture verses, da -da 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 -da, rattling them off and all of that. No, no, no. A fivefold teacher has a special grace to literally get you to the place of understanding what the word of God says what it and what it means okay now this gets me excited here because I remember when the Holy Spirit personally gave me a revelation from that scripture that talks about the sons of Issachar the sons of Issachar who had an understanding of the times and the Bible says that the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the times and they knew what to do. Now that's powerful. The sons of Issachar had an understanding. And because they had an understanding, they then knew what to do. They did not just have information. They did not just have knowledge. They had an understanding of the times and hence they knew what to do now the word of god must become flesh in our lives it must become life to us it must become us so the thing is that a fivefold teacher is grace to bring you to understanding of the word of God, which is absolutely necessary because if there's no understanding, then you may not end up doing the word. Remember, the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the times, not just a knowledge of the times. They had an understanding of the times and hence they knew what to do. Okay, so now we go on to the function, the third function of the fivefold teacher. We looked at function number one, and if you scroll through, I have been listing them. Okay, good night, Sister Daly, good evening, uh, Omar, hello, welcome. Thank you for being here with us and joining in with us. So we are at our third point, the third function of a five-fold teacher in the lives of the believers. And when I say this one, you'll be able to guess. Yes, well, that does make sense. So the third function is to feed 
the believers. So someone else can write that down for me if you are not taking your personal notes um, or I will write it down when Tony is sharing as well. So the third function of the fivefold teacher is to feed the believers, okay? We, we know already, I don't like to say that because as I said, we have some new persons. The word of God is our spiritual food. So just let me say it like that. The word of God is our spiritual food. And let me, this is gonna get exciting here. So let me tell you what a fivefold teacher. A real fivefold teacher, a genuine one, a, a true one, has the ability to make spiritual food appetizing, mm, delicious, scrumptious, edible, palatable, you name it. We're gonna have some fun. <laughs> I'm laughing already. We're gonna have some fun with this one. The fivefold teacher has the ability, the supernatural grace to feed the believers. So coming with that grace, they have this glorious ability to present the spiritual food in such a way that it will cause you to like want to return for seconds and thirds. And it's like, you can't get enough. I want more of this food. I want more of this teaching. That is one of the little key things that would help you to identify a true fivefold teacher. You would want more because they just have this grace to feed and you want to listen, you want to hear. After they're finished, you want to, you're like, <laughs> let me give you a little joke. Last week when we had our, our teaching session here, and you know, I said, okay, we're going for around an hour. You know, we don't want to make it too long, etc. And someone told me after that when I said, oh, we're wrapping up. You know, they were like, what? Already? I, I just like wanted you to continue. So the thing is that one of the, the little identifying marks of a fivefold teacher is that they can engage you in the word of God and you, you, you want more, you would want to return to hear more. They just have that anointing, they carry that ability and that's a supernatural grace. Yes, that's a supernatural grace that they have. Now I tell you, we're gonna have some fun. Have you ever, now be real with me now, be real, you have to be honest. Have you been ever, have you ever been places like, um, and someone was giving you the word and you kept looking at your watch like, when, when is this person going to finish? Um, you know, you want the time to like um, wrap up quickly. You are so, let me be honest, you are so bored, my gosh. And you're like, can this person just finish? Be honest. Tell me in the comment section if that has ever happened to you. You're sitting there. You know it is the word of God and you need to be respectful and you feel like you think, but you are bored stiff. You are like, when is this person delivering this word, message, teaching, whatever you call it, when, when are they going to finish? And even as adults, be honest, be honest. I'm not talking about children and teenagers. Oh, you know teenagers get bored really, really fast. You can ask Nathan and Tony Lee. You have to be really entertaining to keep a teenager's attention, you know, and children in general. But we adults, we are no different. We need an anointed teacher and an anointed preacher or we will be bored too. Let's be honest. We will be very bored. So the thing is that we need, we will be able, sorry, to identify a fivefold teacher by the supernatural grace to feed the believers and make that word come alive. And you just want more, you want to go back for seconds, you want to go back for, for thirds, maybe. And that's I want you to understand that that is not what I'm talking about, is not charisma or personality. That's a supernatural grace given by Almighty God, and that comes packaged within a teacher. They have to teach in detail. 
They really do. They have to break down the word. So if they don't have an anointing to keep your attention, you're not going to get the word. So they have a special grace and they can sit for four hours straight in a teaching session and not be bored and don't want to go home. And I'm saying that because I have some, some, some people around, right around in this uh, teaching session that they're accustomed to four hour teaching sessions like that. Yeah, so you understand, and we understand another function of the fivefold teacher. They are graced to feed the believers. Okay, thank you very much, Anita, for writing down number three. They're graced to feed the believers. Yes, Adina, give it in bite sizes so that we can choose, swallow, and digest. Yes, and they're able to do that. You know, um, I often use a, a term, analogy, like the teachers, they, they have this supernatural grace and ability from God. They're, very, they're empowered by the Holy Spirit to teach like this. You know when you're building a house and you have, you're laying bricks. So think about, you know, back in the story times, brick houses. Well, we, we lay blocks now. Yeah, so it's the same thing. So when you put down a row of blocks, you put down that first block and then you go at the side of that block, at the side of that block, at the side of that block until you've completed the row. Then you go above and you start now laying bricks on a new layer. That is how a true fivefold teacher operates. Um, so I really want to say, um, you know, to Adina's um, response here, her comment, you know, like, so you could, like that can be compared to these bite-sized pieces. They don't choke you off. No, they grace the hand of this thing in, in an orderly fashion, in a systematic fashion. So like tonight, suppose I came tonight and we said, oh, we're dealing with the fivefold. And I'm going to take you tonight. And I'm going to say, okay, here are the functions of, um, uh, we're going to look at the functions of, of the teacher. You're going to look at the functions of the apostle. All five together one time? No. <laughs> no, no, we want these bite-sized pieces, you know, we want to be able, <laughs> gotta use um, uh, Adidas, Adidas comment again, we, we need to be able to chew it properly, to swallow it, to digest it. Listen, when we intake this word, this word needs to go to work in our lives, and it, we need you know the Bible says in the beginning was the word, the word, the part that I want is that the word became flesh. That's the part that I want. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, words was God. Well, you become like Jesus, you know, in that way. The word, the logos, that's the written word in the Bible, it must become us. We must become the word. So when you are given the word, you're feeding on the word. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now listen to this. You know, there's a saying that goes, you are what you eat in the natural. So if we eat healthy things, you know, we become healthy. If we eat junk food, we probably become junky, you know, and have all sorts of issues going on with our physical bodies. The same thing in the spiritual. You are what you eat. We will become what we eat, what we feed on spiritually. So this is our spiritual food, our spiritual diet. And the fivefold teacher is anointed supernaturally and graced by Jehovah God and given. Remember the last scripture Tony read. God appointed the teacher. To the church so the teacher has a specific function in our lives that is why i said well this may be new to some maybe new to a whole lot but here we are 
you know, you would not find Tony functioning like me. Would you? Not in anything. But we're talking about in these gifts. Yeah? No? He preaches more. I'm gifted to teach more. Yes? All right. So, I hope you got that. Is everybody good? Going good? You're, you're learning. Hi, Kenny Chiu, welcome. Just saw your, yes, Lear. Yes, Adina, feed and engage the believers. It's important. You know, it's very, very important. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alfredo, for being uh, honest. <laughs> yes, to the point where you sometimes not off. No, we don't want to be not enough. I mean, granted, eh, some person may have worked hard or didn't have enough sleep, so their physical bodies can be tired. Um, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the supernatural grace of a teacher, a five-fold teacher that can really um, engage us and keep us wanting more food, more spiritual food. Yes, so that was our point. <laughs> yeah, yes, on it. Yes, until I fall asleep. Yeah. Uh, but a fightful, a real fightful teacher is not going to send you to sleep. They're going to keep you very, very engaged. Amen. Yes. So we're going to have Tony now read. We're coming to the last one. So we are our last point. Remember, we don't want to keep these too long. Um, we're going to have Tony read Matthew 28, 19, and 20. And that's going to prepare us for number four, our fourth function for this evening on our teaching looking at the importance of the fivefold teacher in the lives of each believer so somebody could write that down as well what's happening the support connection oh that's why they pop back on so, so, we are going to read Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, with our focus being on verse 20. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Okay, so these are supposed to be two well-known verses, as we no doubt would have heard them several occasions but nevertheless from the NIV version again Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and 20 therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and show you I am with you always to the very end of the age. Okay, so read verse 20 for us again. And the teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Thank you. And teaching them to obey. And teaching them to obey i'm going to say that one more time and teaching them to obey so as disciples and for those who are called to make disciples that is the job you do not teach for information or teach to dispense only dispense information or knowledge you are teaching with the end result the goal the objective being unto obedience okay so that is actually as tony read from matthew 28 19 and 20 with the for the focus being heavily on verse 20 that brings us to function number four function number four where the fivefold teacher is present in the lives of the believers to bring the believers to action 
to bring the believers to action where they act on the word of God, where there is application of the scriptures in the lives of the believers. So the teacher is not there to just dispense information. The teacher is there to bring the believers to a place where they act upon the word, where they obey the word. As Tony read, first part of verse 20 again, in Matthew. Teaching them and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Woo! That's a high order job for the teacher. Because the teacher is not just there to dispense information. The teacher is there to teach the students to obey the word. Have you ever thought about a teacher in the body of Christ like that? Have you ever? That the teacher's responsibility is to teach us to obey, not just to give us information. So I want you to understand that the, 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 the fourth function of the fivefold teacher that we're looking at tonight is to bring the believer to act upon the word of God, bring the believer to obey the word of God. That is why last week I said, you know, um, I would break down the word of God, but then I'll follow you up. So I guess tonight you understand why. I'll, I'll get into your skin. I will call you. You know, you could ask some of my spiritual children. Yes, and I would be uh, annoyed if you do not do what you have to do. <laughs> because I can't, I'm not a preacher like that. So I can't just declare the word and leave you alone that's not the job of a five-fold teacher i remember even recently um in prayer for some persons um i would have received some um words from the holy spirit and i gave it to them and i followed some persons up and i shared with them the importance of you writing down and recording i I want to say something here, writing down and recording the word of God, and um, so you have it. Now, that's a whole set of teaching that will probably come when we deal with the prophets and the prophetic, okay? But I don't want to get into too much into that. But the thing is, I'm going to follow you up to ensure that you obey. So let me give you a joke now. Okay, I'm a teacher. I can't hide that. It's just who I am. God built me like that. This leopard ain't changing the spots because these spots came from the heavenlies, okay? So, Tony came home one evening and I was sharing with him, you know, some persons that I had reached out to and sharing the information. <laughs> and so I remember I was in the bedroom and Tony sat there in the chair and he went, I hope... That, that you're not just giving these people too much, too, too much stuff. I, <laughs> I was like laughing, you know, and he's like, like feeling a bit concerned. And I'm like, I am putting the information out there as the Holy Spirit leads. They look at it at the time that they have. I am not choking off anybody, but he's like, to me, it was like, he, he was like scared. Like, I hope you are not pushing these things on people, you know, like, like giving them or feeding them too much. But then here I am as a teacher, and I'm like, listen, if you ain't doing this, you ain't helping the people out. <laughs> so it's like, that's my function, that's my role, because the fivefold teacher wants to bring the believer to action. The fivefold teacher has no it's like inbuilt within them. They want to feed the believer. They want to feed the body of Christ. I would get up and I would know exactly what I need to post because I'm going to feed you. And then some, I would take time out and it's a lot of time. It's a lot of time when I stay here and I, I go and, um, you know, thanks to Dina, you know, she was suggesting to me that, you know, probably I should start a group. And that, that was so wise because that's going to help. Because I would literally take, copy 
um, some notes from off of Facebook, the, the, the images that I would post. Because, you know, like we said on Sunday, a few of us, some people are visual. So to just write some things on Facebook in black and white, that's not cool. Mm -mm. That's very boring. You would agree? Very boring. So I look for images with color and graphics so that it would be engaging and it will pop when you see it to create more interest. So that's a good teacher. Now, I would take those images, copy and paste them, and then begin now for some persons who are not on Facebook because I can't help. This, this is my job. This is my assignment from heaven. I have to teach. And so I would send it to Facebook and I would send it to this person and then copy and paste that and then, you know, to somebody else or to somebody else and to somebody else because I can't help. That's just who I am. So what do you have to say about the fivefold teacher with those abilities, giftings, graces to do that? That is a bit different from, from even a preacher. Well, I mean, the endowment comes from heaven, comes from the spirit of God and the spirit of grace. Yep. Who obviously, uh, you know, dispenses and downloads into each individual as he so freely um, desires. And uh, the, 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 the level of impartation and teaching obviously comes with the assignment. And um, it is for the, 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 the the one who has been gifted to yes, execute the assignment, execute the training, execute the teaching. Uh, because what we are saying is that the teacher feeds, and it's important to you know, feed um, the believers because we are trying to equip them for the works of service and coming into a level of maturity. Amen. So there you have it. The four functions of the fivefold teacher. Number one. What was number one? What was number one? What was number one? Um, the, the connection was a bit poor, so what I did is that I, 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 I Tony and I, I took our phones off of Wi-Fi um, to see if that would lessen the pull on it. But number one, to present neutrals to the believers. Okay, the next function we discussed was to equip or train the believers Number three, to feed the believers is a function of a fivefold teacher. And number four, to bring the believers to act upon the word, to obey the word of God. So those are our four functions for tonight. And I trust that you learned a lot. Now, I want to make this, this um, one statement here in concluding. I hope you realize that a, 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 a five-fold teacher is not your average Sunday school teacher. You realize that? Oh, your five-fold teacher is not your average Sunday school teacher. Sometimes we can have Sunday school teachers that, you know, they're, they're believers. You, you, you give them a... Um, was that a, a, a book or a lesson? Yes. And then some person can, you know, share the information and teach. But the fivefold teacher is not your average Sunday school teacher. Fivefold teacher is totally different. They're part of the five governmental offices that Jesus Christ would have given to his ecclesia to mature them to equip them, to train them for the work of their ministry. All right? So, with that being said, that brings us to the end of this evening's 
teaching. I trust that it was really educational. You learned a lot and this would help you in identifying a fivefold teacher that this would have helped you to realize how much you need a fivefold teacher in your life and we need fivefold teachers in our lives and so again comment and let me know what stood out to you the most what were some of the things that really resonated with you from this teaching tell me what you learned from um the, the the teaching this evening on these four functions of a five-fold teacher. It was one last point. Yes, thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me. When you, as, as we would have gone through this uh, teaching tonight, can you identify any five-fold teacher outside, um, like, maybe that you would watch on youtube i remember back in the day when we had um what's it we had um tv tvn when we really well i grew up spiritually on tvn because you know you had so many ministers every hour it was somebody else Woo! and some of us had our favorite preachers our favorite teachers and stuff like that so i want you to see by this and going through these functions if you can identify now that you have this information and you have this knowledge if you too can identify um, fivefold teachers within the body of Christ based on the functions that we have discussed this evening can you identify fivefold teachers any fivefold teacher I have two that always stand out for me um, to me um, yeah and for me yeah, really, really impactful fivefold teachers in the body of Christ. One is a male and one is a female. But for you, you can share yours in the comment section. But for me, it's a face one. Oh, dear. <laughs> but for me, mine would have been like when I look at fivefold teachers, there, there are many more. But for me, the two that stood up for me the most. In my Christian journey um, has been or was one was um, Joyce Myers as a female she is a teacher of the word grew up on so many of her teachings from TVN as a young Christian so Joyce Myers she's a teacher of the word she doesn't preach the word she teaches the word she um, she's a teacher Definitely a fivefold teacher, and as a male who would have stood out for me most and maybe impacted me most was Dr. Miles Monroe. He was just a hardcore teacher, among other things, in a fivefold ministry, but definitely a teacher. In his church, you could see, I mean, a plethora of, of videos from him on, on YouTube now, and although he's gone on. To glory you would always hear him say write it down <laughs> and I mean he was a teacher you had to take notes when he stood before you he would tell you write it down now um, we're, we're coming to a close but I, I need to join something else here that weighed on my spirit today I want you to develop a better attitude towards the Word of God when you're going to the house of God when you have things going now you can even be on YouTube grab a pen grab a pencil show God how serious you are about the word because it needs to feed you write things down take notes do not go as though you are going to the Apollo theater so I'm now teaching you how to handle the word of God when you go to your assemblies when you go to your services then now you have your phones. Take your phone out, find your record, hit the red button if it has a red button, and record. When you get back home, 
I mean, I do that often, many times, even when we had the live broadcast here from home. During the week, I got those things in my ears and I'm listening back to the word of God. And I would drag Tony up about it, you know, because when you get in a preaching flow, he can receive downloads immediately and his mouth speaks. And sometimes he don't even remember what he says because it wasn't like him. So I'm like, Tony, you got to be, you too, you, you got to be like, you got to line up under the word. I hope, I hope you, he's so serious. I hope you, you heard what the spirit of God said, even through your mouth. Sometimes he would be like, Nat, did I say that? I'm like, boy, you cannot miss the word. No, we got to take this word seriously. So, I mean, hear from my heart, please. I want to encourage you to handle the word seriously, to begin to, I don't know, wherever you are, take it up higher, okay? Do not go into the house of God without, and you know if I teach this, I know where you are, you know that I may keep at you, because you know I'm going to hold you accountable. Let me know that you're recording the messages. Let me know that you're taking notes. You could take notes. Sometimes I open up. You know, we, some people don't walk about with uh, pen and paper anymore. So I open up uh, like an email, an email um, on my phone. And I would, in that email, I would start taking the notes so that I have it. I have it saved as a draft. So I want to give you these little extra tips tonight. Start to handle the word of God in, in a better way. Show God that you're serious. You're serious about your growth. You're serious about your feeding. So when you get before the word of God, do not sit down as though you are in uh, the driving cinema. You had driving, you had driving cinemas in Montreal before? Mm. You know? Okay, well in Barbados, you know, when I was young and stuff like that, remember, you would go to the drive-in. So the drive-in cinema. So you don't go in a pen and any paper. You're just going to watch something like it's a show. No, when you go into these places, the, the services, the whatever, as I said, you may be online. If you're not going to a show. We are not here to perform for you. You do not have a showtime I would tell the rest all the time, this is not short time at the Apollo. This is about equipping you. You take the word seriously. I'm going to do my part because I have to stand before God and give him account for every person that the Lord puts under me. I don't want lashes from God. So I'm going to work hard. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to receive downloads. I'm going to feed you. And I'm going to feed you and I'm going to feed you well. You can ask the others who were up under me for quite a few years now. Oh, I'm going to feed you. Now, you have a responsibility also to receive, to take the notes, to go over them during the week, to scroll back down through that page, to learn, to, 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 to digest. I have persons taking notes from the post. And they told me they're doing that. Like, they're making their own notes in their own notebook from what I've posted out there. Anyhow, I wouldn't keep you any long. God bless you. Thank you so very much for joining. I pray that you appreciate everything that we shared with you this evening. Thank Tony for being here. You look like you're a little sleepy. Tell you a smile. Yes. And see you next time. And you. see you around. And what do you want to tell them? Well, as was shared with what, um, tonight, it's not shared, as I will tell my students. Uh, you are being taught for a specific purpose. So please pay attention to the information and there will come a day when you would have to apply All right. application of the word. That's what's important. So enjoy the feeding and of course as the fourth um, um, important point says to bring the believer act upon the word yes that's it act upon the word, upon the word. obey the word yep. all right so god bless you thank, you, god bless thank you. you so much for joining it was a pleasure sharing with you do have a beautiful evening bye-bye bye bye bless you